Clean up on all five. Clean up on all five. Clean up. Let's go. Hey, look at you. You already told your boss you need a raise, and you also said you're going to take over the motion design going forward, right? All right, well, let's pump the brakes here a little bit real quick because we have some cleanup to do. We've talked through the storyline, and we've created with intention. Now, our job is to take a step back and look at the whole picture. And we've done that from time to time, but now that we have everything in place, including the loop, we'll have a better sense of what's working and what needs to be tweaked. Now, I'm also gonna bet that most of you might say, eh, this is just a details video, so I'm gonna skip this, but the best motion design is the last 10%. Those details really matter. Since we'll be focused on the bigger picture here, although we followed some systems and patterns, it all goes out the window because at the end of the day, our job is to make something that not only looks good, but feels good. So there's definitely a couple things in here that just don't feel good. So I wanted to go hit, go in and revisit and, and highlight just how small details can really impact the difference of your piece here. So the first one that I'm gonna play with is this line. If I solo board one, this eventually gets to the center line gets horizontal. And I want it to be one short of that so that when artboard two hits, it's horizontal, it feels like there's continuity there. So I'm gonna highlight all of my boards here and pull them back. And I can unsolo that. And you, and that's just gonna feel it just feels like it lands so much better, right? Like there's continuity between that frame and that frame. So that's a, that was a huge step here in the right direction. The other thing I want to do is start Artboard 3 in a place where there's some dark blue in the background for the same reasons, continuity's sake, because it's almost like there's too much that changes. So let's go ahead and jump in and play with that. First, let me just duplicate this background, put it behind, and hit U because I'm gonna clear out these keyframes and click to the end so that when I turn off my keyframes that it maintains this last state. So it's gonna be full screen. And if I hit color, search color, click on my controller and make sure I'm dark blue and click off. Make sure I'm on my first frame. And maybe that is the place at six frames where I want it to really come in. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I alt left bracket, it's gonna pull up. And the dot kind of stays in the same place. I think that might be Okay. And maybe I'll move it up one. Highlight both of these, move it up one, just so that blue dot feels like it's moving. It's not just in the same exact state. And let's RAM preview that and see where that takes us. Definitely feels a little bit better. All right, I'm good with that. The other thing that's bothering me is this this area feels a little stiff from the player into the stats. I think I, the stats kind of come to an abrupt stop here. Maybe I want to ease those in just a little bit more. And this player just doesn't quite feel right. So let's double click into there. Go to my cutout, hit U and pull up all my keyframes. I think I'm going to start by scaling her down a touch. I, I clicked on scale to highlight both my keyframes and I'm going to take her down to maybe 90%. And that means I'm also gonna have to adjust my Y position here. So if I highlight all these, bring it down, or we put the Repetile on that, but I don't wanna rely on the Repetile to solve all my issues here. All right, let's, let's see what this looks like before we play with the Y position. Yeah, it feels a little like she gets 
caught here and it look it just feels a little stiff. So let's go in here. I might tighten up a little bit and maybe make this go 700. Let's see if we can play with the curve here too. I don't want it to be flatten it out a little bit just to and maybe we let it hang here for a little bit longer. I'm going to pull this one back a little bit too, just to flatten that one out a little bit. Maybe both of them. All right. And maybe it's actually my, my starting point here. Let's push this off two or three frames. And maybe it's the abruptness of my pink layer here from Artboard 4 coming in. Yeah, I'm going to smooth that one out a little bit. And I think that might help with that transition as well. So let's go back. Remember we pulled this all the way in. So I got to do a little trick here to free myself my handle. And if I hold shift, it'll constrain back. So let's try that. I'm just pulling it back uh, almost two frames here so that it starts. And has a little bit gentler slope here. And you also notice that my cutout here didn't follow. So I'm actually going to delete that. And what I'm going to do here is highlight my background. And if I go up to edit, copy with relative property links, click on my cutout, because remember when you paste, it's going to paste above the one that's highlighted. So if I paste and I turn off my eyeball, it's going to be in the right spot. So the reason I did this edit copy with relative property links is because if I go to edit this, say I decide I still didn't really love how this went, if I move this out, you can see that the relative property link layer doesn't appear here. So anytime I move, any adjustment I make, is replicated across to this layer that is copied with relative property links. And if I hit EE on it, you can see it's basically automated a whole bunch of expressions to tie everything back to the original layer, which makes that work like a charm. So I'm just gonna undo to get back to this original state. And that's a nice little trick if you wanna use that. The only downside is if I wanted to offset this in time, it isn't going to work. It's still going to maintain the same properties as this one, like it was in the same exact spot. So let's go back to our primary artboard. And let's go into, let's go into our stats, stats, text. And I want to highlight these and maybe push them out, hold alt shift, push them out 10 frames. And let's play with our curve here. Let's pull this back to, let's maybe just let it jump right in here. Maybe I want it just briefly here, so maybe two frames, and then I want it to really settle. All right, so I just did two here. I can highlight this, and we're gonna go two. And we can highlight this one, fit, and two. All right. A lot of this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just trying to tweak and make things feel good. And 
Now I feel like they're not moving fast enough, so took it a little too far. Highlight all of them. One, two, three, four, five. Split the difference. I feel like my layers in here might be moving a little quick. So if I highlight all of my layers here, just gonna select all my solid colors here first and hit U. And let me highlight. Hold shift and click and lasso select all of these. One, two, three. And then my stroke, fill, stroke, fill, U. And highlight these. One, two, three. And make sure this one goes out. One, two, three. All right, let me see how that looks all together. I think I really overdid the stats, huh? Let's go back into our stats text. Here's bring them back to. And I think I'm going to change and just let them shoot right up. Shoot right up. And same thing here. That way they get a little bit more time to kind of settle into place and it just flows a little bit better. There we go. I, I see two more two more issues I want to solve here before we wrap up. My text here goes from dark blue background to filled dark blue text to another filled dark blue background. All I really want for this name is just to be a texture. So let's hop into Artboard 4. And I'm just going to exchange this fill for the stroke. And that's just going to knock it back. A little bit and let's also solve this issue because remember since this is a circle we actually had to scale this up so when we go into the scale here what I might do is actually just knock this forward a couple frames just so it fills the screen And I think that is gonna do the trick. And the other thing I'm noticing too is that she's not really moving enough for my taste. So if I hit EE, -E, we can quickly resolve this by, let's up this wiggle to maybe four and add another 25 to her. And we can take this up to 0.75 and let her wiggle a touch more. So now let's hop back out and we should be done tweaking at this point. Some point you just got to call it done, right? And that definitely feels much better. So thanks to all of you for going on this ride. I hope you learned something and I'd love to see what you come up with, especially if you, if you change things and take what you've learned here and apply it in a different way. 